It really is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. <laughs> so, stick to us. AFV will be right back. I feel very lucky to have you all here. Family is what makes us strong. When you're out on the job, you can't be thinking about what your brother did or who your father is. You do your job. Understand? Drop it! Weekdays at 4 and Saturday and Sunday nights on WGN America. You know a place has a good barbecue if there's a pig on the sign? Um, or pigtails. <laughs> barbecue. Weaver. We're probably best known as being where Stephen King got the idea for the book The Shining. How scary does a hotel have to be to give Stephen King goosebumps? Very, very scary. It doesn't help that this place is a massive labyrinth of hallways and spiral staircases. The haunted landmark was built at the turn of the century by F.O. Stanley, inventor of the Stanley Steamer automobile. Everyone wanted to stay at the Stanley. But it wasn't until 1973 that a chance visit made the hotel a mecca for ghost hunters everywhere. Stephen King, he's looking for an idea for his third book. Nothing's coming to him. So a friend suggests he and his wife get out of town for the weekend. They leave Boulder, they start driving west into the mountains, and he sees the Stanley. Now, this place in 1973 was very dilapidated. It looked a little spooky, in fact. Well, that's right up Stephen King's alley. And he decides to come up here, see if he can spend the night in the hotel. Stephen King's here the last day it's open. Everybody's leaving. Stephen King left to kind of wander around by himself. He started roaming around the halls. He couldn't find his room. He got lost in the hallways. This is where the idea hits him for the book The Shining. But the Stanley Hotel was haunted long before the Master of Horror booked a room. As we're coming across here. In fact, this place is so crowded with restless spirits that the concierge gives daily ghost tours and guests trade personal ghost stories every morning over breakfast. There's definitely some kind of energy or something going around that's not, you know, other people. The ground floor, it's frequented by the spirits of F.O. Stanley himself and his wife, Flora. Call it micromanaging from beyond the grave. F.O. Stanley is believed to be back still watching over things at the hotel. He likes hanging out in the front lobby, in particular around the front desk. Flora Stanley is also believed to be haunting the hotel. Well, she was a very accomplished piano player. She passed away in 1939. She had a stroke right in the middle of the lobby of the hotel. Almost immediately after her passing, she began playing the piano. That's one of the oldest stories in the hotel. One of the most haunted areas in the entire hotel has got to be the fourth floor hallway. In a real life scene of horror that's recreated in the pages of The Shining, guests often hear the spectral voices of children at play. On the fourth floor, people will hear the children running up and down and playing in the hallways. Usually it's between two and four in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning, there's no kids up there. I come in very early in the morning. Um, probably one of the first people that come into the hotel. I came in this one morning. Well, I continue walking through the hall, and all of a sudden I got this far into the hall, and I felt a push, like, on my shoulder. And I thought, oh, it startled me because I didn't know what it was. I slid all the way down the hall, Right at the end there. It all happened really fast, too. When I heard her yell my name, I took off on a flat-out run, and here she was right by the corner, just laying there. We don't know who it was. There was nobody else in the hotel. We looked. There was nobody else here but us. Bob helped me up to the office. I was shaking. I had um, red marks on my hand, a little bit of blood on my hand. As soon as I opened the door, I said, didn't you hear me scream? They, they